Alabama at LSU, Georgia at Ole Miss, South Carolina at Vandy. It's a prove-it week in the SEC. Time to get the squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. And what is up, everybody? Welcome into our SEC squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the SEC. And, of course, today's episode presented to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return at FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com today to get started. All right, we got a full squad here today, gents. We start with Clint Shamblin of the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. It's Georgia Bulldogs sitting pretty. Steven Willis, Locked On Ole Miss. They got a big one this week against those Bulldogs. John Neighbors, Locked On Razorbacks. Oof, oof. I think Ole Miss just scored another touchdown on them. Uh, Joining us for the first time, we got John Williams of Locked On Sooners with Jay Smith of Locked On Sooners. So two Oklahoma guys coming in here. Kind of like that. Oof, oof. Yeah, kind of like that quarterback system at OU. We're going dual, dual threat here. Exactly. Uh, He's main and they come out of the woodwork. Jonathan Davis locked on Longhorns and Chris Marler locked on Gamecocks. And for some reason, he's wearing an LSU hat this week. Uh, uh, you know, I'm just I'm happy to be here, born in the USA, ready to go for, you know, ready to run. Shut up. <laughs> Guys, as we, as we get started here, let's start as we always do. We will ask each of you to just make a prediction about your team. Anything that comes to mind, it could be this week. It could just be about the season, whatever. Clint, let's start with you. Georgia Bulldogs with a top-ranked SEC team in the college football playoff rankings this week. Give me a thought on your team. We send Old Miss to checking airplanes as well as Lane Kiffin is looking for a new gig because Ooh. we beat them down to three losses and send their season into a torrid tailspin in which they don't recover. Wow, it's quite a prediction. Stephen Willis, a rebuttal? Uh, say no to drugs. Seriously. <laughs> say no to drugs. No, seriously, Georgia's coming into a buzzsaw this weekend. There is no way that they can be prepared for going into Oxford, Mississippi and what they're going to see. <laughs> seriously. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be, be 70,000 crazy nuts people that's been waiting for this game for nine months. And they are going to open up on Georgia and they are going to take care of the Georgia Bulldogs and propel themselves into the college football playoff. I like it. Mm-hmm. Steven, just don't say get your popcorn ready, all right? Last time Lane said that, it did not go well. No, that's that's the pregame show. Okay. Hey, look, your 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 um, prediction has kind of been the theme of the SEC this year, right? I mean, like, home field matters. We've seen some big upsets on home fields. Home teams yeah. were three it and didn't matter for us. Uh, yeah, usually home favorites. That's <laughs> a talk- Marla, we're talking about like the big games. You just saw oh. it. South Carolina just upset AM. AM beat LSU, the home teams so in the Listen, big match. I, just, I, I think he lost me at 60,000 Vineyard Vine mannequins named Jace being all super pumped up. Like George has never it's walked Chad. that before. It's Chad. The Chad. name is Chad. They got a high noon in their <laughs> right. hands, by the way. Yeah, it's a white call. It's a white call. We all know it's a white call. John Neighbors, give me a prediction on your uh, your hogs, man. Yeah, yeah, they're going into the bye week, so they'll probably lose that one at home too. Um, so yeah, they like it's amazing. I've never seen a team that sucks so bad at home and is actually decent on the road. It's crazy, uh, but no, it's fine. It's totally fine. It's cool. Uh, plane tracking season's coming up soon, and uh, maybe we can have the Waltons of Walmart and Tyson Chicken Man be able to back up some nil money to get a a coach that actually knows what the crap he's doing. So here's hoping for a great off season. Hey, you guys might – last time you Texas came to town, you beat them a couple years ago in Sark's first year, so that's next week. All that hope, maybe. Oh, yeah, that th- that makes me feel so much better, Gordy. That'll happen. I mean, come <laughs> on. Like, why wouldn't it? it? It Again, this team sucks at home. They're playing yeah. Texas. Texas is good. Arkansas is not. We know the result. We know how it goes. Just in the season. I'm a Jets fan. That's what the Jets stands for oh. is just in the season. So just in the season for the Rage of X, let's get the show on the road. Basketball starts actually <laughs> – uh, here very soon this week. So let's do that instead. Arkansas is not bad. They're just not great. So 
you yeah. Know, fun. I, also, I love the fact oh, yeah. like, I've never seen a team be this bad. And, like you lived in the Chad Morris era like five years ago. Bad at home. There's a difference. Yeah. Bad at home. And also, Gordy, when you're talking about uh, you know, they're not bad, they're not good. And it's not like you're not you're not attractive, but you're not ugly either. Like, who wants that? Who yeah. wants that? that Sounds great. Live my whole life you're on fun. that. There, there, there's a there's a whole list of frat boys in a bar at two in the morning that are looking for just that. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna shut up Georgia this weekend, too. <laughs> We have yeah. we have gone off the rails already. And I love this. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Seven home games this season for Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I trust me. It's been it's been quite an anomaly to see uh, how how it's all gone down. And you know, again, just to see five touchdowns by one single player. Ole Miss set. I think it was what set or tied six school records on Saturday. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I love breaking right. and having history made in uh, Razorback Stadium. In, in, including the unbreakable Cy Young of Ole Miss quarterback records that is total, total offense. That one yes. fell in the third quarter. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's so cool. I didn't realize that. Thank you. <laughs> right, before, before John Neighbors starts playing some uh, goth music and getting really down, let's get to Marler. Give me a uh, prediction on the Gamecocks. First off, I, let's do the goth thing. I would love to see an emo version. Is, is there a Taking Back Saturday version? Of John Neighbors, because um, I would love that. I would love that. Um, you know, listen, like South Carolina did exactly what I thought they were going to do. I was a little bit worried, a little bit worried going into, you know, like blowing that lead and, and being down 20 to 17. But Shane Beamer, Lenora Sellers, growing up in front of your your very eyes, um, it feels like they're really turning a corner. It really does. And I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because you have Vandy on, on Saturday. But it's been awesome to watch Lenora Sellers not have a single turnover in the last two or three games. Carson Beck cannot say the same for sure. Um, and, you know, and watching Shane Beamer be able to do things like put teams away, like be on, be great early on script, but then also put teams away. It's been a lot of fun. Let's get to uh, Jonathan Davis, host of Locked On Longhorns. You guys got to rest up a little bit, but uh, get the Florida Gators and Billy Napier throwing out there. Oh, we might see DJ, DJ uh, Lagway. We might not, but uh, uh, one that the Longhorns should win, right? Yeah, I think we may not. Look, this is going to be a get-right game for the Texas Longhorns, favored by 21 and a half. I think they win by 24-plus. I think we see Arch Manning in this game. If there's anybody that still thinks they have a reason to keep Billy Napier, that hope gets killed this weekend. Texas beats up on Florida really bad at home. Wow. You're just going off the deep end there after you guys hung on by three to beat Vandy. <laughs> just straight the shot, Vandy, no chase whole eligible whatsoever. Vandy. Gordy, not, <laughs> don't disrespect them just because Corey's not here. Don't disrespect bowl eligible Vandy. Yeah. All right, we're, this is gonna be this is gonna be a weird one here. We got to get to our two Oklahoma guys we got on the show. <laughs> Duet. I'm gonna Jason. be very I'm gonna be very quick. Shout out that John got to make it. I know he had to deal with a whole bunch of uh hit work stuff, and he was out there helping people with hearts. And so I was, you know, I didn't know if he was gonna be able to make it. I'm just very happy to see that my guy was able to survive all of that. No. doing his duty and coming on the SEC squad. Wow. Don't disrespect John. Week. John works hard. We've been holding it down every week. So thank you, John. Wow. For finally we knew Until that was finally coming. cooperated and got to bed in a reasonable time that I could get here at 8 central time. <laughs> Well, but I want to talk about this game against Missouri this weekend. It appears yep. that the spread has flipped completely from minus four Missouri to minus two and a half Oklahoma. Sounds like Drew Pine may be leading the way, which means it should be about four or five interceptions in this game. I kid, but not really. Uh, we should be able to go into Missouri, beat them like we've done over the last few years. Uh, feels like we're starting to get back on. We're starting to do what we've done, you know, back to historical Big 12 days and Big 8, actually. Yeah, Big 8 era. So we're going to go back That's to Big 8 era. Point. Was it like ninety six times or something they've met in the in the past? Yeah, something like times. that. And look yeah. for Jamel, seven of those have gone Oklahoma's way. Yeah, look for look go. for Jamel Holloway to have a big day with Keith Jackson and this they head towards the. That's exactly what I'm seeing. Baseball. Wing some yeah. wing, you know, yeah. wing T out there. That's what I, I'm here for this. It. Might be a game that SEC fans will there. rally around Mizzou for the first time ever <laughs> because I for real like. I think that OU fans coming into this season win with a this this attitude like oh we're OU. We're a blue blood. We're this and that. And it's been tough sledding this season. And I think Mizzou has had this one circled. All, all that to say that if Drew Pine steps on the field, I'll take everything I just said back, and I will delete every clip that comes in here. So <laughs> it, 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 that's what's actually going to happen. Pine is going is, is basically said that he's going to start if Brady Cook can't oh. play. And I think that dude has a broken hand. And so in that case, yeah, we're going to walk in with some confidence because guess what? Missouri is dealing with exactly what we had to deal with. 
injuries to critical yep. positions. Dang, it sucks, doesn't it? John, help me out here. This is a massive game for OU because the next two games are going to be tough against Bama and LSU. You win this one, you're six wins, you're bowl eligible. Yeah, Bama LSU was always going to be difficult, whether you were healthy or not. And Oklahoma not being healthy on offense, it it makes them nigh impossible uh, in those two matchups. But this one, you got a winnable one. You got to go win it. This is a, a big game for Jackson Arnold, big game for Brent Venables, big game for that offense. And if they can improve upon what they did in the first half against Ole Miss, and then obviously the get right game against the FCS. And hey, I'm I'm all about the eight game SEC schedule after watching Oklahoma play an FCS game. That's beautiful. Uh, made everything right with the world on Saturday. Uh, so yeah, big game for everybody all the way around. Got to go up. Got to beat Missouri. You've done it 67 times, dating back to 1902. You got to do this one. This is a it's a must win game for Oklahoma. I'm sorry, I'm Gordy. Sorry. Look, I'm so sorry. Look, Oklahoma used to be a proud program. Now we're talking about getting right against Maine. I mean, my goodness. Hey, and also don't same. worry about it. We, we got some. Oh, you you got to take the ones you can get, man. It's been a terrible oh, season for Oklahoma. There's no getting away. No, no way around that. It's been I can't. Well, as soon as Texas goes through a whole bunch of injuries, I'm just gonna go ahead and play this clip for him every single day so he can listen, man. It. Don't worry, it's gonna happen. I'm not happy to say that, Jonathan. Mm. I'm not. I am not happy to be on this show talking about. Oh, I can't wait. Nice I can't to wait to Oklahoma dig into Jonathan. Win. Oh, I'm so excited about but it. But it has been a rough month being an Listen. Oklahoma Sooner fan, follower, analyst, media member. It's been terrible. I'm Here sorry, Gordy. You can have it back. But, I mean, yeah, good Lord. It, it, their fan base, the Oklahoma fan base, has to be pretty good because after seeing what South Carolina did and what Ole Miss did this past weekend, that kind of makes the last three weeks feel a little bit better, I think. I said the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. Let's uh, to make this uh, Uncle Jesse and, and Uncle Joey. Let's make it a full house. <laughs> let's bring in Corey Burton, locked on Vandy. Corey, give me there a prediction go. for Vandy this weekend. Well, I think they're going to snap a 15 game losing streak here uh, against South Carolina. I think they have their ducks in a row here. They're feeling good about themselves, being bowl eligible, and let's. Uh, it's time to snap another streak here. Home yes, underdogs. Shorts. Yeah. Home underdogs. Yeah. They're under the SEC shorts. Vandy guy is going to be in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. Vegas, Vegas just does not respect Vandy. Like every week, they keep their underdogs. I know. Yeah. Hey, by the way, can I throw this out there from our last stream? And I know no. you guys remember this. That you got everybody that was like, ah, I think this is the time Auburn's going to really get it going. You know, the Vandy bird thing is going to finally end. And me and a couple of others that are in here, uh, like, just start respecting Vanderbilt as actually a good team. Like this Absolutely. idea is like, ah, it's finally going to come to an end. Ah, Auburn's flying high. Give me a break. Vanderbilt's good. Start respecting Vanderbilt. They're the team I have to root for now because my team sucks. There so, it is. Okay. There now is. I understand. Because if we're calling shots, I was the one that says South Carolina was going to win and AM was going to lose because Marcel wasn't a quarterback that everybody had on a Heisman watch. And I think a yeah. lot of us said that otherwise. So I spent most All of right. my Saturday night yelling at Casey Smith on a on a, <laughs> so a, way, that, that, a was, that was pretty okay, how bragging I was came waiting on you to get order. banned. All right, we're all going to take a second to pat ourselves on the back. Uh, we're going to dive deeper into the two big games this weekend, Alabama at LSU and Georgia at Ole Miss, the SEC squad, talking more ball next. Back to the squad in just a second, but want to remind you guys about uh, Robin Hood Gold. If you have not checked them out yet with Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Right now, the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn the liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robin Hood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. Those generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robin Hood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offer, offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Today's episode also presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. And look, you can get ready to tackle all the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats for you live play by play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just go visit FanDuel.com to join today. Again, get started with that $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
All right, guys, let's dive back into it here on the SEC squad as we got some big matchups happening this weekend in the SEC. And let's start in the afternoon affair, 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern on ABC to 7-1 and one Georgia at 7-2 and two Ole Miss in a monster game for both sides. And we actually have our two guys who, who host the Locked On podcast covering these teams here. So, Clint, let's start with you. Keys to a victory for Georgia. And I got to think it starts with Carson Beck throwing less interceptions. What the hell's going on there? I, this is this is a wild stat. Georgia in games that Carson Beck's throws three interceptions, they are scoring more points on average than when he doesn't throw interceptions. So it's it's a crazy thing happening. I don't know how that's a possibility, just winging all over the place. But I'll say this: first team to thirty wins. I think Old Miss has a very stout defense. I'm not looking down on them at all. I think their defense, uh, with havoc rate and chaos rate, that defensive line efficiency wise is very 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 good. I am not looking past them at all. Offensively, I think that if you look at Kirby Smart. This is what this reminds me a lot of the Texas game. This has all the makings and all the same understandings. Uh, high flying offense, most efficient defense. Everybody talking about uh, Texas had the number one elite defense efficiency. Georgia came in and Kirby Smart knew the game plan to shut down the offense. I think guys like Lane, Josh Heupel, Sarkeesian, who have these mega genius game plans. Kirby Smart is their kryptonite in those games. He's not a kryptonite against Milrow. I never, ever in a million years can he play against him and beat him, but that's fine. But I think against this team, it's going to come down to who can score 31st because these are two defenses that knows what we're doing, knows what we're happening. Uh, it's going to be a great game either way. I have Georgia winning this out and covering the spread. 33-29, somewhere in there. Um the only difference between this game and the Texas game that you have is there's like a 75% chance of rain in this game. And if this is going to be a weather game, it's going to be about both defensive lines. So I don't think either team is going to get to 30 points in this game. I think this game has a chance to be a 13 to 10, a 17 to 13 type oh. game. And Jackson Dart, I trust him throwing the football that's wet more than I trust Carson Beck right now. And there's already been one game where Jackson played in a monsoon and he completed 30 or 40 passes against Mississippi yeah. State. Um, so that is where I'm coming from there. And we take all of the intangible stuff that I was talking about earlier and, you know, like banging my chest about. But the main thing that I see in this game that I think that Ole Miss has a real chance to win this game outright is the fact that the weather is going to play an issue. I trust Jackson Dart throwing a wet football more than Carson Beck. Okay. Yeah, it's really unique. Georgia coming into this with injury concern at running backs. Cash Jones has been quite incredible. Everybody mm -hmm. poo-pooing on Cash Jones. He's been insanely good. He's going to get more run if ETN can't go with that bruised rib and pain tolerance. Frazier, the true freshman, is going to get more run clearly as well. He has to. And so running the ball, needing to secure it. Um, and if the, the screen game from Georgia is going to be the de facto run, those five, six-yard hits that they do to Dom Lovett, that's their run game when they can't get it in between the tackles. And if the Rain's going to be sloppy out there and guys can't do it. That's going to be interesting. Uh, down a running back, all of a sudden, that defensive line for Ole Miss can get off the ball and stop them. That That is a big, big uh, a factor in the favor of Ole Miss. Well, Henry right. Parrish has been banged up. Uh, he got banged oh, he, up. He's, he's out. Yeah, he's at, that so, injury that he had against Arkansas. He's not playing football again this season. Dominique Thomas wasn't even on my radar. Didn't even know no. who that kid was. And yeah, he, it's still the on. amazing thing that USC's Bentley still didn't come in and play. Everybody thought, okay, this will be finally USC's Bentley. And it's like, no, we're going to put Dominic Thomas in. And Rashad Amos is injured. He's going. He could come back. Matt Jones could come back. We have no idea who's going to be on the backfield against Georgia. And Man, anybody else? Crazy. Got a it's, thought it's, on this one? It's kind of crazy that Clint, like you're talking about Carson Becky, sounds like me on NCAA uh, College Football 25. Every time I throw seven interceptions, I score like 60 points. But if I don't throw any interceptions, I can't score. I don't get it, but I guess he's in video game mode. So shout out to him mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, I think, you know, like common sense would tell you that, you know, just Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss, they don't win these types of games. But I think, you know, Clint, you made the comparison of this kind of feels like the Texas game. And, you know, not to you know, say anything bad about my own quarterback. But I think the difference in this matchup is Jackson Hart <laughs> actually has a chance to be the best player on the field in this game. Quinn Ewers, not so much. So, you know, I do think that Ole Miss has a chance because Jackson Dart is just a straight-up baller, and he's going to get a lot of, you know, opportunities on the outside that he might hit in this game. Yeah, I think Trey Harris is going to be back for this game too. And that, that's going to be huge right there, yeah. having Trey Harris back, not only having a deep threat, but the ability to get rid of the ball quickly, which you know Lane's going to do. He yeah. knows George is going to come yeah. for their neck. And so he's going to try to get rid of the ball as fast as possible. One and a half possible. seconds is that, it's, is it's, that clock in Dark's head. Has anyone watched Georgia play football over the last four years? Like all this love we're giving to Ole Miss, like 
outside of Alabama, Georgia doesn't lose these games at all. It's not that Lane Kiffin. It's them. fair. That is it's very that fair. Georgia doesn't lose them. And I, hold on, hold on, Stephen. Like you went into you went into Athens last year, and it was fourteen to fourteen. The game ended fifty-one to fourteen. Mm-hmm. Like Kirby Smart does not lose these games. And I know we we're joking around with the Vineyard Vines mannequins and Jace and 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 Chad and Trace and whatever else, but Kirby Smart is not going to be scared of a bunch of Patagonia vest wearing, call my daddy to borrow his Tahoe to set up the tailgate kids in this stadium. Yeah. It's going to be a bloodbath like it always is. Like, like yeah. this is what Listen, Kirby does. He's 40 whenever, years old in the last four years against teams not named Alabama, and they're never close. Yeah. Whenever if Georgia plays its perfect game it, it, at the top of its level, there's not a dang thing that Ole Miss can do at that point. There is no chance that Ole Miss is winning that game if Georgia plays their best. But Georgia plays its best once or twice a year. I do not think that Ole Miss is one of their up games this year. Mm. I think Texas was their up game. I think Alabama was an up game. And I think Tennessee at home, that is kind of what Ole Miss ran into a year Mm. ago. I think Ole Miss is going to see the version of Georgia that Missouri got a year ago. Ooh, okay. And and if that happens, they have a chance. And and based on what we're seeing from Carson Beck, I don't think he's just going to stop throwing interceptions. Like this yeah, isn't just a yeah, one week no. thing. This isn't a bad game thing. He is lost right now. Or I mean, yeah. taking too many chances. I don't know what it is. Here's, I don't think here's that's going to stop. Right Actually, now. it sounds like because Haley, uh, well, Cavender is now back at school and practicing at Miami. That could be what's costing him right now. He's he's shame on you for uttering that name on this on this show. <laughs> Never again <laughs> shall you do that. Okay. Uh, but here, here's the thing. First downs. Carson Beck, essentially all of his interceptions come on first down when he's not taking what the defense gives him, when he is pressing, when he thinks he's Superman. If Carson Beck realizes that he's just an OK quarterback, not a great quarterback, Mike Bobo and this offense will be just fine. Carson Beck's an OK quarterback. If he plays within the system and everybody hates that, I'm fine with it because the best of Georgia's system is a system that gets 33 points per game. I'm fine with Mike Bobo doing that all day long. So if he doesn't force on first down, my my hot prediction is that zero interceptions this game. No interceptions from Carson Beck whatsoever in this game because they're going to have a system. Bobo is going to make him throw short on first down and get ahead of the sticks. And it, that's going to that's what's going to keep us in this game. I think it's going to be close. I, I, I think Ole Miss, this is their up game for sure. It's going to be a great one. Clint's saying that means that uh, Carson Beck is going to throw an interception in the first six minutes. But we'll see. If he does, <laughs> don't Lane, come Lane, on the text thread. Lane, oh, Lane, Kiffin to to do whatever. Lane Kiffin needs to not be Lane Kiffin in this game. I'm and sure what I mean by that is he doesn't need to go for fourth and one in minus territory against the Georgia Bulldogs. That is a trap. Yes. That is the ultimate yes. trap when you play Alabama and Georgia. They want you to go for that. They want you to return kickoffs because they're superior talent. They're going to win more than they lose. I, I've said Kirby Smart, back to what uh, Chris Marler was saying, Kirby Smart adapts, changes. Yeah. Most coaches adapt and change. There are a couple of coaches that I haven't seen one time because they think they're the smartest people in the room. Lane has historically been that way where he just thinks my system won't work. I'm the smartest guy in the room. If he can deviate from that and throw a change up instead of a 95 mile per hour fastball, things change in a heartbeat. I I agree with that. He's a genius mastermind. When you go up against another mastermind, Steve Sarkeesian ran into this. Mm -hmm. Sark had great concepts. Just turns out that Kirby out, Manned him, and then Ewers wasn't doing so great, and everything. <laughs> I, was about to say, I think Sark did his job. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, I think Sark, Sark did, did his job. Did, call spade a spade. <laughs> yeah. Corey had his hand raised for like eight minutes. Corey, I got you. Yeah, appreciate you, Chris. No, I, I was gonna. I mean, shoot, this is like three points ago now, but I was gonna second your 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 point about Carson Beck and throw those picks. I mean, he he's a good quarterback who thinks he can make every throw on the field, and. If, if he could just, you know, I was going to piggyback on you saying if he could just take the simple throws, I think Georgia can get in a rhythm and rock and roll. But he gets that look in his eye, and he's just like, he does that first pick, and he has that bug-eyed look like, oh, no. crap. He's, he's trying, trying to impress Mel Kuyper. He's, right? yeah, he's, he's trying to impress Mel Kuyper and Kyle McShay. You he's know, trying to justify he's his girlfriend's uh, status in his life, and he needs to not okay. do that anymore. He's yeah. like, yeah. get one of them Cavender yeah. twins, man. You got to do that. I got to date Lee Cavender. I got to make this throw and it um, never works out for him. I Go will ahead. say this about Lane Kiffin against Oklahoma in the third quarter. He stopped being Lane Kiffin and started yes. playing football yes, and everything clicked in. Yeah, start, it, um, stop taking risk. And that fixed Jackson dart. John obviously saw the next week. He, he had a little relapse of going for it on a fourth and one 
when all they have to do is take points. But yeah. if he could just channel Kirby and channel Nick Saban and take points and plays that are available and just play the percentages, yeah, this Ole Miss team will be very good. Yeah, what was that? A couple and, years ago against Bama, he went for it on all those fourth and ones and didn't get awesome. one of them. It was awful. All right, we got plenty more to get into. We got to get to LSU Alabama, and we'll get to a couple of the other SEC games. Coming up next, more here on the SEC squad. Back to the squad in just a second, but I want to remind you about our friends over at Hims. And guys, if you ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom, it's time you stop worrying about your performance and get Hims so you can feel more confident whenever you're in the mood. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis, and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor visits. Just answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. No insurance is needed. One low price covers everything for treatments to ongoing care with hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers. Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online uh, visit today at hims.com slash locked on college. That's H I M S.com slash locked on college or, or locked on rather for your personalized ED treatment options. Hims.com slash locked on. Products mentioned are chewable compounder products, which are not approved by or verified for, safe, for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions required online. It's a consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. All right, gents, we got to dive back into it. Spencer McLaughlin joins us from Locked On College Football as well. And Marler, let's start with you. Alabama at LSU. This one's been odd. I mean, it, the first the books first opened, LSU was around. Like I saw one book had him as a one point favorite, but many of them have been on Bama. And we're sitting here still Fanduel sitting at about two and a half, three points in favor of Bama. Uh, it's a de facto playoff game in Baton Rouge. College game day will be there. Big game for both LSU and Alabama. You know, I'm I'm just eager to get to my favorite stat in all college football. We talk about Death Valley. All the time. We talk about Death Valley Night. Oh, it's so scary. It's dark there. It's so loud. They're singing boozy. Blah, 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 blah. Alabama has lost six times in 67 years in Death Valley. I will to say that again. Six times in 67 years they've lost in Death Valley. And I don't think that they're going to go in there scared at all. I do think that this is a huge, huge uh, game for obviously for both teams. But Brian Kelly and Garrett Nussmeyer, we saw what that looks like in, in A&M. Obviously, it's on the road. But Nussmeier didn't look great against Ole Miss until the very end of that game. Even on that final drive where he got pat on the back for being the hero of it, I think he was like 4 of 11. So it's not like if, if he if he starts turning the ball over early and Alabama is one of the most opportunistic defenses in the SEC, it is going to be a really, really long night for LSU. And it's going to be a really long night for me because my boss is going to be pissed. Well, well hold on. You want to say Gary Nussmeier is at times he had not look great. Jalen Milrow. I mean, he couldn't. He was throwing it uh, ten yards out of bounds in uh, in in Neyland a couple weeks ago. So mm-hmm. he's going to have to play statistically better well. than throwing it to the other team, though. Give him credit, Chris. Thank Come you, on Spencer. now. I guess so, but he did throw it. I haven't seen him throw any, any interceptions at defensive linemen or throw three and a half. That was also pretty tough. I, look, hey, there's, there's a tropical storm spinning up in the Gulf, and that could change everything in this game. Oh, good, because LSU's run game is really good this year. So if they have one dimensional, and LSU can't Hayden stop Durham. a running quarterback. Hayden Durham right. was coming on, and then they couldn't run against a and Alabama third worst in the SEC against the run this year. So this might be the year, the week that LSU does get the run game going. But this yeah. just in, Kalen DeBoer has actually started coaching now. So everything is going to change, guys. He's actually oh, mad. He's I, heard, I heard they're <laughs> tucking in shirts now. They're tucking in Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. They're on time to meetings, too. That's my favorite one. That's something I wanted publicly to be said. Look, two years ago, Nick Saban was the head coach. He went to the, he went to Knoxville and lost. He went to Baton Rouge and lost. Now it's Kalen DeBoer. He's already gone to, to Knoxville and lost. Does he go to Baton Rouge and win? This is going to be a big one. Again, night game, Brian Kelly is undefeated as LSU head coach at night in Death Valley. He's lost one home game. That was against Tennessee when Hendon Hooker was there. And then Hooker, losing Baton Rouge, Gordy, and then Hooker versus Galen Milrow, a little bit of a different quarterback. And this is an elimination game for the playoffs. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get to the other game. Okay, Anybody hold on. Here? Are we like 110% certain on that, that the committee would not, under any circumstance, put a 9-3 SEC team into the playoff? 
Yes. I cannot wait for them to put I don't think you three. can with the, with the way it's looking right now. Unless something it. dramatically changes. Right, 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 I don't, I don't right, right. see a 9-3 team making right. it. Right, but Jonathan, you hit on it. With the way it's looking right now. But what if Notre Dame loses another game? What if SMU doesn't win the ACC and they fall out? What if Boise State gets tum- gets tripped up in the Mountain West Championship game? Like, there are just a lot of teams ranked ahead of that Ole Miss LSU Bama trio right now who are all sitting with two losses. And Texas A&M has got a couple of losses as well. There are a lot of teams that could still lose, and November can be chaos. Is all like I I don't think an SEC team at nine and three should get in, but I can't say with a hundred percent certainty that the committee will leave them out under all circumstances. I don't it's think it's like Lysol ninety nine point nine. Go ahead, John Williams. I, I was going to say I don't think it's completely out of the question. There's going to be a lot of teams beating up on each other over the final month of the season mm-hmm. that can change everything. I think it depends on the brand. If it's Bama. Yeah. Yes. Or LSU. I think LSU maybe. I think Texas. Not nine and three Mizzou. Nine and three Mizzou no. ain't getting in. No. Mizzou's yeah. done it too long. Nine and three Mizzou shouldn't even be in the top twenty five. Yeah. Ten and two Mizzou yeah. might not get in. Nope. So. Ten and two Mizzou shouldn't be in the top twenty five. I'll keep no. going. You beat seventy five to ten in your two most important <laughs> games of the season. It's it horrible. Sorry, Sorry, John Miller. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, they're one of the few teams that slayed the dragon in Vandy. So they, they do a nine and three Vandy, nine and three South Carolina. There's a path, man. There's a path Here's the nine and three teams that would have to make that South happen. Carolina Tennessee, if Tennessee catches three L's, they lose to Georgia and Vanderbilt to end the season. Now Tennessee is has those three losses. Tennessee's ranked ahead of LSU and Bama right now. Georgia, let's say Georgia loses to Ole Miss this weekend and takes an L in the SEC championship game or against Tennessee. Yeah. They'd have to jump a couple of teams Ooh. that are already ranked higher than them and with better wins. They, those two teams. So if we're saying, and then Texas is there, I think I don't think Texas catches two more L's on the season, but we're talking those teams would be the three team, the three lost teams that could get in. That's for maybe, but if Georgia loses three games, Georgia's not making the playoffs. They lose to Ole Miss in, t- in Tennessee. They're done. They're out. So, so Clint, I think you raised an interesting point that I frankly hadn't pondered about going 10 and three, like 10 and two regular season, make the SEC title game, lose the SEC title game. I think that team's automatically in. I've said all year, I think whoever loses the SEC and Big Ten championship games are going to automatically be in the playoff because I don't think in those two conferences, the committee is going to punish a team for being there and then losing to someone who they probably have ranked in the top two or three. All right, guys, we got all we got the next few weeks to talk about who gets in the playoff. Let's talk about this weekend. We got a few other teams. We got games we got to get into. Florida, Texas. Anybody think the uh, Gators can hang around at all? They just can hang around. Can hang around. around? Yes. You know, since I'm the the expert here, right? You know, maybe if DJ Lagway was playing in this game, Texas kid, it could get interesting. Now with Yale boy, you know, the third string quarterback, he's just happy to be there. Like I said, Texas is going to cover the spread. They're going to beat them pretty comfortably. His name is Aiden Warner. Say his name, okay? He deserves a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think Yale Jonathan's going to respect him. He's Nelson. not going to. Uh, until we do our crossover, it's Yale boy. And I'm, you know, I think it's a, I, 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 I think there is a higher possibility than people think that Florida can keep it closer than most would imagine. That's yeah, the do. silver lining angle that I will give to the Gators in in this they particular just, game. Because look, it's closer jo- than most people would imagine. I don't know. Only losing by twenty. Oh, okay, there we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're, like, they're going to they are going to struggle on offense majorly. But Jonathan, your confidence level in Quinn Ewers right now cannot be that high. Oh uh, no, I'm actually confident in the number one uh, defense in the country and number two scoring defense in the country. That's fair. That's very there fair. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Um, yeah, it's, Texas it can't be Longhorns. Texas. Texas. Oh, yes. Yes. It's, oh. Chris, it's really easy to do that when you have a schedule that ranked 95th or something like that in the nation. You can go ahead and brag about stuff like that. Not Didn't we play Georgia? Low, but it's you did. And, and what happened there, expert? We're, I told you. <laughs> number two scoring defense <laughs> in the country. Number one defense All right, in the country. Over I'd over like to point out please. that the witness did I answer the question there, Your Honor. <laughs> they beat UTSA. Give them the credit for that one. How about uh, South Carolina Vanderbilt? Anybody Ooh, feeling Vandy thing. at home as the underdog here? How can, how can you pull against or go against Vandy? Yeah, at point? Like, I, I'm, I'm on. You, can, you might be able to pick Vandy against here. them, but you don't feel comfortable doing. After this. Shane no. Beamer saying, "When I see you with the whole team to his wife, there's no way I could go against you know South Carolina." I'm yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm, the fantasia emotional scene letdown fantastic. factor is kind of real for South Carolina in this spot. Hey, true, but I don't, we've I don't had think an South upset. Carolina's high enough to where you can ha- he can have an emotional letdown. I think they're taking care of business at this point. Yeah. They are. We have had an upset every single week in the SEC. So the, I'm, the question is, which one of these games is going to end up being that next upset? It's a Florida. great point, Jay. Corey, two, two more, 
Two more games to get to here. Mississippi State at Tennessee. Uh, I mean, Michael Van Buren, I think he's going to be awesome down the road, but Mississippi State's awful. All right, well, since yeah. since the Locked On Gamecocks and Locked On Vandy guys didn't get to talk about the actual game that their teams are oh. playing in, let's, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead and take the, the reins on this one. Michael Van Buren, fantastic quarterback. Love the three names. Sounds like the eighth president all time. Great sideburns. <laughs> Should be fantastic this weekend. Played some really, really difficult things. Corey, what do you think about the Indiana versus Northwestern game this weekend? Uh, I think it's going to be a bloodbath up there. I think it's going to be, you know, Indiana is just. Come on. Oh, We've got eight gotta, people and we're trying to get through five games this weekend. Um, all right. So everybody thinks says Google Indiana plays Michigan, by the way. Everybody thinks Tennessee wins. <laughs> No, uh, no, no, no. I, I really quick. I'm, I am Tennessee first half is awful. I, the point spread in this, give me the points in Mississippi state. Tennessee agreed. can't do anything on offense whatsoever. The defense is incredible, but you have a mobile quarterback. Give me the points in Mississippi state. I'm Stop. taking them it's to a, cover. It's been a system play Dylan Sampson's going to run and a half crazy. years yeah, to bet on yeah. Tennessee in the first half. Like every single, I charted it in one of my stupid notebooks with a number two mechanical pencil they scored first in like eighty percent of their games. Like going into the season, they won the first half. It like spread, like I think it was like something like seventy three percent. So if Josh Heupel has, has won the most first half spreads, even after the last four weeks, out of any head coach in all of college football, out of three hundred and five total coaches, more than anyone else over his six years being a head coach. I don't know what the hell happened in the last month, but it has cost not me, but a lot of people a lot of money. Tennessee first half is, is, is as right much now. of a lock as Indiana overall against the spread. I think Indiana is like eight and one against the spread this year. Against Northwestern. Yeah, All Dylan Sampson is going to be able to name his yardage against Mississippi yes. State. Their run defense is awful. It's awful. All right, our last one, uh, OU against Mizzou. John Miller's not here yet to uh, or this week to represent Mizzou, but we've got two OU guys. Everybody feel like OU gets their sixth win, gets to a bowl game? Goodbye. Mizzou's reeling. <laughs> <laughs> He just did. Like, just, just <laughs> I'll take OU. They got right against Maine, allegedly. You know, so I don't know. Did you watch good. the first quarter? Right. Uh, Two you know, drives. not if first they drive. beat Maine and, and they're an SEC drive, the team, right? You know, uh, I'll take OU. Yeah, Missouri's dealing with, like I said, in, on the first segment, Missouri's dealing with injuries now that it's really going to be catastrophic for them. You lose your top rusher, you lose your quarterback, and you bring in a guy who threw three interceptions the last time you had to play him and. It's not going to be that good against a team that it's ranked in, you know, we're top five, top six in sacks, and we're also, you know, top ten in turnovers. So we should be able to cause a few of them. Anyway. By the way, John, yeah, who's uh, who's scary. who's starting a quarterback this week for the Sooners? It's Jackson Arnold. Yeah, this is going to be way too aggressive, but like this is kind of how I'm feeling right now. You can tell Sooners fans to mail me apology letters in the mail for my take that Jackson Arnold wasn't the issue with the Oklahoma offense. So you can just convey that to to those over there in in norman like hit me up on twitter i'll shoot you my address and you can send those apology letters in the mail those, those same people can say that missouri's problem in this game is going to be drew prime because he needs to be getting on linkedin <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'll pass it along. it's gonna be a great I'm insurance gonna salesman everybody's Somewhere. pretty well aware after we fired our offensive coordinator and uh tried the other quarterback both guys had you know three turnover first halves and had to be benched so i mean it wasn't all jackson arnold but against Tennessee, he got a little bit reckless with the ball, had to sit down. It's like when the, the starting pitcher, who's a young guy, loses his command, you got to sit him down. Jackson Arnold's come back. He's a much more confident, comfortable player in the pocket now. Yeah, this is we the last see. bowl, by the way. Yeah. Well, we will see if, uh, if they can finally get the win. Gents, it's been fun here on the Locked On SEC squad. Follow and subscribe to your favorite you SEC hated, show. Yeah. We'll uh, be covering your favorite teams every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I'll have you covered the, the entire conference every day. Locked on SEC, part of Locked on Podcast Network, covering your team every day. And check out John Williams on Locked on Sooners. Jay Smith, he's here every week. John Williams isn't, so check them out, Locked on Sooners. Uh, for the whole panel, I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys next week right here on the squad. Go Hoosiers. <laughs>